It's no secret that year to date, the stock market is experiencing significant declines. In fact, it's the worst start to the year since the 1970s. Whether it's the insane inflation rates, the lockdowns in China, or the war in Ukraine, fear is building in this market as a bearish sediment takes hold of investors worldwide. There's also a fear that central banks may make steady but drastic increases to the interest rate, which can potentially cause a recession. A slowed down economy is one of the primary reasons why a recession may occur, and the result is that fear is building in the market and you're seeing this fear manifest as investors begin to sell their assets and move to cash positions for many that have only started investing recently this might be one of the first downturns that they've experienced and might be a rude awakening to the fact that well stocks don't always go up they can go down and in this video we're going to be discussing five essential steps to ensuring that you're able to weather the storm through these turbulent markets to help you have a positive outlook on the future Let's get started. Step one is to establish your financial goals and your investment horizon. I'm in my mid thirties, so I've got like 25 or so years to continue investing before I have to worry about utilizing my invested assets to sustain my lifestyle. If you're in your twenties, you've got even longer. It's not even a concern. If you're near retirement, however, things get a little murkier and that's the topic of another video. So let's assume for the purposes of this video that the vast majority of us watching have long-term investment horizons from 10 to 30 years of investments ahead of us. What this does is it allows you to take into consideration that what happens in the short term, this short term volatility does not necessarily ultimately impact your long-term financial goals. Markets move in cycles. They always have. And I know that it can be disheartening to take a look at your portfolio and see it down by a significant amount of money. But what's interesting about this is that when you take a look 20 years from now into the past and you think about wow do you remember how stressed out i was at that market downturn well that was actually the best buying opportunity that i had in some time and it all becomes noise because at the end of the day if you have a long-term investment horizon the short-term volatility doesn't necessarily impact you because once again the markets historically recover it's essential that you take into consideration what your financial goals are and what your personal investing timeline is as that old saying goes Time in the market beats timing the market, and that has never been truer as it is now. Step number two is to diversify your investments. Diversification means that you're putting your money into a wide variety of different investments. You're not just putting all your money into one stock or one sector or hell, one specific geography because individual markets of individual countries can experience different types of volatilities. It can be very valuable for you to have a diverse set of assets. It is something that will allow you to weather the volatility of a declining market. With regards to diversification, there is this long-standing tradition of recommending that people have some exposure to stocks, some exposure to bonds, and a little bit of exposure to more speculative assets like cryptocurrency. But that's not what's happening at all, because if social media is any indication, what we're seeing is a lot of people being overexposed to particular sectors and particular geographies. Take, for instance, the NASDAQ in the United States. A lot of people will have significant exposure to tech stocks on the NASDAQ, and when that market sees a significant correction, Direction, their entire portfolios get destroyed. So let's take, for example, let's say you have five individual tech stocks. If you have five tech stocks and that is what your entire portfolio consists of, you are overexposed to that market and to that sector. There's different approaches you can take to diversifying a portfolio like this, which I know a lot of people are probably wondering about. One way is you can say, pick two of your favorite stocks of the five, the two that you love the best and the ones that you think will perform the best over 30 years. And what you're going to do is you're going to sell off the other three and then take the assets that you've earned by selling off those other ones and essentially dollar cost average into a new position of defensive stocks, whether they be utilities, uh, consumer staples, energy, whatever it happens to be, something more defensive. And that will give you a little bit of diversification. Alternatively, what you can do is you could just keep and hold those five stocks because you liked them in the first place and you believe in them. So don't sell them, just weather the storm, weather the downturn, and then take your additional funds that you're going to be dollar cost averaging in. And what you're going to do is you're going to put them not into those tech stocks anymore. You're done with the tech. You're going to put them into those defensive assets, the utilities, the, the financial financials, uh, you know, the consumer staples, you're going to be putting them into those, you know, large cap defensive stocks that allow you to have some ex uh, exposure to those important sectors of the market, while also giving you essentially an incredible amount of diversification. 
I've spoken to many new investors and it always blows my mind when I find out that they have absolutely no diversification whatsoever. It's actually incredibly common and it's important that you take steps now to diversify your portfolio because diversity is what ultimately allows you to weather the storm when we experience downturns like we're experiencing right now. Step number three, and we kind of alluded to this earlier, is to dollar cost average. While everyone dreams of taking a large lump sum of money and just throwing it into the markets right at the perfect time, timing that market perfectly, hitting the bottom of the market just as things start to take off again, basking in the glow of nothing but glorious gains, posting on Wall Street bets about you made an incredible amount of money in such a short period of time. It is an unbelievable feeling, I'm sure, but it's also unrealistic as hell because it's never going to happen. You need to be smarter than that. You need to dollar cost average. Dollar cost averaging is without question the best way to weather volatility in an uncertain market. And it reduces your stress by so much while investing, especially when you have a long-term investment horizon. What you essentially do is instead of taking that thousand dollars and throwing it all in at once or whatever the amount of money happens to be you take your money and like you split it out over the year if you have ten thousand dollars to invest instead of throwing out ten thousand dollars all at once you do ten thousand divided by 365 and that's the amount of money you invest every single day or if you don't want to be that cerebral about it, you can say on Monday, I'm buying one share of this stock in the energy sector. On Tuesday, I'm buying one share of this stock in the consumer staples sector. On Wednesday, I'm buying this stock, you know, in the banking sector and financials. On Thursday and Friday, you're buying two other ones, your tech stocks, whatever it wants to be. Actually, not your tech stocks. You already have five of them. You got too many. But anyways, you get what I'm saying, right? You're diversifying your assets. And that is essentially what dollar cost averaging is. And do not underestimate the reduction of stress you experience here, especially as someone with a long-term investment horizon. As I mentioned prior, knowing your financial goals and your investment horizon is everything. And dollar cost averaging takes out the stress of day-to-day -day kind of volatility because if the stocks go down, who cares? You're buying them on sale. If they go up, cool. Everything you bought before just went up in value. You only win with dollar cost averaging. And when you use that strategy with a diversified portfolio and a diversified strategy, especially with a long-term investment horizon, you are bound to ultimately win because all that volatility, it ends up just being noise in the long run. Investing in bear markets is hard enough and dollar cost averaging allows you to have the discipline to continue investing on your day to day or weekly schedule to buy those dips that no one else is going to buy because they're scared. And you know what? The people that buy those dips that continue investing with a disciplined planned dollar cost averaging approach are the ones that are happy they did when the market recovers because they see the value that they generated for themselves and their portfolios by buying stocks at the bottom, by buying stocks as they declined when everyone else was too scared to. And now when the stock market recovers into a bull market, you're the one laughing your way to the bank. Step number four is don't panic. I know it can be hard to watch your money disappear during uncertain and difficult economic conditions, but it's so important that you don't panic and make rash, irrational decisions that could potentially negatively impact your investment goals and your financial freedom in the future. This is why the previous step, dollar cost averaging, is so important. It prevents you from panicking. It provides you with an actionable strategy that you can execute on when markets are at their most uncertain. And it's so important that you stick to your plan and that you continue to use your dollar cost averaging and do not panic. Because one of the things that I feel like no financial YouTubers talk about is the mental resilience and the emotional resilience required to consistently invest during these bear markets. It is one of the most important things you can do to have that resilience. And it's one of the hardest things that you can do. But ultimately, it's the thing that you have to do if you want to experience financial freedom in the future. If you have a long-term investment horizon, stick to your plan. Do not allow panic to force you to make irrational choices that may have a detrimental impact on your future. Step number five is to be patient. As I mentioned prior, time heals all markets. And if you don't believe me, why don't you take a look at the year to date for any market you care about, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, whatever, the TSX, take a market and take a look at the year to date. It's pretty scary, eh? Now what I want you to do is I want you to zoom out. Now I want you to zoom out even further. Keep zooming out. Zoom all the way out until you cannot zoom out anymore. And what you'll see is that despite all the valleys, all the volatility, over time, the markets have always traditionally gone up and to the right. It might take a while, 
but they always ultimately recover because time heals all markets. And this is why I put so much emphasis on the resiliency of the investor. Because if you can weather these bear markets, if you can weather these most difficult times of struggle and economic uncertainty, you can most certainly handle the bull markets that are coming in the future. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to learn more, I really think you should check out this next video because I think it is incredibly useful for investors of all types and of all ages. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in that next video.